It's really, really wintry outside. Happy New Year, guys. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas holidays. Uh, hopefully, you got to spend a lot of time with your family, loved ones, doing the things that you love. Let me get this closer and up. We had a great Christmas. Fantastic. You know, back to work like most of us have been for a couple of weeks, this close to being caught up on my orders. And I realized we're in mid January and I haven't made a single video yet. That's terrible. Now, some of you might remember a couple months back, I made a video about how the spring died in my Kershaw Clash, it broke. And I had a lot of great feedback from you guys. A lot of you guys had suggested making a spring with piano wire or calling up Kershaw and being like, hey, can you send me a spring? And I just didn't have time to get to that yet. Two gentlemen in particular, really, it, it blows my mind how generous you guys are. Uh, Sean, he actually lives near the Kershaw plant and he called them on my behalf and asked for replacement springs and then he mailed them to me. So Sean, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I just opened up the package today. I had the package, I knew it was in them, but I just opened it up. And here you go, I've got two springs from a Kershaw Clash. In addition to that, a gentleman named Peter from the UK sent me a care package and I didn't even know this was coming. And uh, he says, Jeremy, I hope this helps. All the best, Pete. Well, Pete, thank you so much. I cannot believe your generosity. Pete took apart his Kershaw Clash took the blade out of it and sent me everything else. I mean, I've got the screws in there, the pocket clip, the spring that I needed for mine. He's got the side frames, the back spacer, the little liner spacer thing, the pivot bolts, everything but the blade. And that just kind of blows my mind. I, I can't, you know, Pete, I, I just have to say thank you so much. The generosity is absolutely amazing. And uh, one thing I'd like to know, um, he actually said in his email too, uh, you know, if you want the blade, let me know. I can send that as well. But Pete, uh, from what I understand, from what I gather, this is your knife just sitting here. You've got the blade of it. And um, please let me know, because I'm more than happy to send this back. Just, I, I feel terrible that you sacrificed your knife so that I could have one. I got this before Christmas, and it was just an incredible way to kick off the holiday season and just, well, just thank you so much. So let me know, Pete, if you would like one of these Kershaw, if you'd like me to send this back to you, I'm also gonna send you a coffee mug as well as you, Sean. Uh, just, just something I can do to say thank you, but thank you guys so much, I appreciate it. And for all the other great input and suggestions I had, a lot of you guys said, oh, I'll call them, and you know, you gave me the numbers. So thank you guys so much, I really, really appreciate it. This was always my EDC. You know, I also have the Benchmade Bug Out, which I love. I think it's a fantastic blade. And I thought, you know what? It's time to just bite the bullet. And this was always kind of a dream knife for me. You know, some people buy like six, $700 folders, and I would love to, but with four kids and, 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 and you know, I gotta be responsible at all, right? So Benchmade Griptilian for me was always like a bucket list knife. And I got it. I got it a few years ago and I loved it. I cared for it very well. I'd kind of only wear it when I wasn't gonna, when I wasn't gonna be using it, uh, cause I wanted it to stay pristine and nice. And so with my Clash finally dying, I thought, you know what? It's, well, it didn't die cause it's actually death proof. But I thought, you know what? With the Clash having uh, issues opening now, it's time that I just start carrying this. And after carrying this knife for a couple of months, I actually don't like carrying it. And the reason is it just feels big in my pocket. And it, it's not a huge knife, but it's not a small knife either. And part of this could have been tainted due to the fact that I've been carrying my bug out as my good knife. You know, you go to town or you're not planning on working in the shop. I put that knife in there. I mean, that thing just disappears into your pocket. Like you don't know it's there. Uh, this thing, not so much. And so I've come to the conclusion that this is not my favorite knife to carry. I love the blade. It's a great knife. It, it's light, it's not heavy but it's big. So what I'm gonna do with this knife is this is probably just gonna end up in a pack somewhere, like in a hunting bag. I mean, I think this would be a great skinner actually uh, for doing some work out in the field. So that's where this is going to be. And um, kind of, uh, you know, it, you know, you have to you have to carry knives. You have to use different knives to really develop what your particular taste is. And still love this knife, just don't like carrying it. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna put one of these springs back into my clash. Now I'm actually gonna keep the other spring in a safe spot because both of my oldest boys have the Clash as well. And if mine failed, eventually theirs is probably gonna fail too. So, Sean, again, thank you so much. And Pete, I, I can't thank you so much enough uh, for your generosity in sending these to me. So, let's get this thing set up. We'll go ahead and take this apart, put a new spring in it, and see if we can get that action back. See, this, this is no good. That's not what we want. Really very straightforward doing this. Essentially, we just take off these screws that hold these side plates together. Actually, you know what, stand by. 
I like these black work tops. They're kind of nice, but uh, screws fall under them sometimes. So we're gonna put this here. I can actually see them a little better as well. So all we're gonna do, take out these little screws here. Switch up the bits. Take out our pivot screw and carefully pull this apart. Now, what we can see here is exactly where the spring goes. This little channel here, this little recess is where that spring fits. So that's as far as we need to take, take this thing apart, right? Like we don't need to get all crazy. So if you're gonna take apart your clash, all you need to do is just put the clip side down and uh, you should be able to do this entire operation without getting anything else out. So it's really, really simple. Now, if we look at this, clearly this would fit in here like this and like this. So this just goes like that. And, oh boy, you know what? If we open this a little bit, it's gonna help our situation. Okay, there we go. Now at this point, with this opened up like this, oh, we gotta keep our little backspacer. Oh, my backs, okay, never mind. <laughs> Leave all my bearings. I mean, I, I've recently lubricated this thing, so I don't need to do that. It's always a, if you don't take your knife apart that much, it's always a good idea to hit it up with some oil while you have it at this point. And now we're gonna stick this in here like this. Kinda try and line everything back up. Okay. And then really, it's, uh, it's just as simple as this. First, we'll put the pivot bolt in, pivot screw. All right, now we'll tighten up our pivot bolt. Don't want it too tight, because we want it to move freely. Also don't want it too loose. Oh, that has got some jam. Um, that is definitely cranking harder than it's ever cranked before. Well, I am really excited to have this knife be able to carry it again, and uh, we'll find a spot for this. We'll put it in a pack somewhere. Um, yeah, anyways, thanks again, Sean and Pete, for sending me this stuff. Uh, for you guys, for your incredible suggestions and tips. It's unbelievable, you know, you put something into a video, you, you share something, you work at a video, but you get so much back in return, and that's from you guys, so I thank you so much. Uh, a few changes I've made this year, I might go into a little bit more, I've got a video, I'm just kind of gathering notes on some stuff that I might offer on the business side of running a knife making business, becoming a full-time knife maker, uh, but I made a few changes to the way that I handle my knives. Um, limiting what can be uh, purchased as like a custom knife. I had 10 spots available. I announced them on Instagram and they sold fairly quickly. And, uh, but what that's gonna allow me to do is control my workflow more. You know, before people could say, oh, I want a chunky monkey and order it. And then I wake up in the morning, it's like, oh my word, I sold six chunky monkeys overnight. And that's what's kept me so busy and that's also kind of what's kept me from making videos. So coming into the new year, I'm gonna be doing knives. They're gonna be you know, available. They'll boom, knife sheath, sharpen up, ready to ship. Then I'll list it. And if you want it, you can click the button on the website and it'll ship the next day. And I'll still be doing knives that I want. There's also a lot of weird knife designs and, and things that I've wanted to try, but I can't because customers are waiting on their knives. So really wanna provide a higher level of customer service than I've been able to, especially with this Christmas craziness. It's, I've been terrible, terrible at my customer service and I made some pretty crazy changes and I'm excited about it. And uh, I think my customers will appreciate it as well. Also for 2019, let me know what type of content you would like to see. Um, one of the things with kind of controlling my knife orders and stuff is that it'll free up more time and actually be able to schedule times for making more YouTube content. Uh, I've got some tools that I'm testing out, reviewing for Tool Time Tuesday. Uh, viewers knives, I wanna do more of those. Those are incredibly difficult. Like they're like six hours, six to eight hours to edit a viewer's knife. So hopefully with a little bit more time or better management of my time schedule, uh, I'll have more time to get those out because I know a lot of you guys appreciate them and I absolutely love seeing what you guys are doing. And uh, other than that, more build videos. The last video I did that kitchen knife, that was a, that was a gift for my parents for Christmas. And uh, that video is doing pretty good. That's a fairly popular video. Uh, but I don't want to do just those because those are great. I want to do more of those. But I also like the other facets of videos. But I'd really like to hear your opinion. What videos do you guys like? What do you want to see more of this coming year? And if you, know, if you think there's segments you could just drop, I'd love to hear that too. I'm not saying I'm going to, to do any of that stuff. But I'd like to get your feedback and uh, you know, kind of gauge where the, the general vibe is uh, regarding the content that comes from this channel. 
Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Like, just clicking that little thumbs up button really helps. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. You can check out my other content to kind of see what goes on here. And uh, I'm really looking forward to 2019. Looking forward to spending it with you guys, sharing it with you guys, learning from you guys. It's going to be a great year. Let's make this the, the year that we make the best knives we've ever made and uh, learn some new stuff and share some new stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Cheers.